In vector search, how we define distance is how we define similarity. Once your data is embedded into vectors, you're working in a space where position encodes meaning. But closeness in that space is subjective. It depends entirely on the metric that you use to measure it. And each metric tells a different story about the similarity. So let's break down the most common distance metrics, cosine similarity, Euclidean distance, and dot products, what they really measure, when to use them, and when to avoid them. So let's start with cosine similarity because it's one of the most used uh, distance metrics that we have. This one is all about direction. The formula is the dot product of the vector divided by the product of their magnitudes. The result is the cosine angle between the vectors. So the smaller the angle, the higher the score. So if the vectors are aligned, even if they have different lengths, the cosine similarity for them will be close to one. So this type of similarity is great when direction carries meaning, but length of the vector does not which is the magnitude. For example, joyful and happy might map to two vectors that have different lengths but have the same semantic direction. However, if the length of your vector carries information, the cosine similarity will ignore that. The next one that we're going to talk about is the Euclidean distance that captures the straight line between two points or two vectors. The formula is the classic Pythagorean distance. It captures the absolute distance and value across all dimensions, and it's very useful when every dimension matters equally. Anything that numerical distance is meaningful. We can think of image embeddings or spatial data or even sensor data. But the catch here is that Euclidean distance is scale sensitive. So that means that if you have one specific feature, for example, salary much larger than the other ones, that will affect the overall similarity that you're going to get. So unless your vectors are properly scaled or normalized, Euclidean instance can be a bit misleading. So you probably want to avoid it if you're talking about semantic rather than absolute distance between vectors. The last one we're going to talk about here is the dot product, which basically measures similarity with magnitude in mind. To calculate this one, you basically multiply each dimension and sum it all up. So this one rewards points that are not just uh, aligned, but also large. So if two vectors point the same way or same direction, the larger one will get the highest similarity score. That really matters when magnitude is part of the signal, for example, in recommendation engines, where a large vector might indicate a stronger preference. But if your data varies in magnitude without you meaning to, for example, too many different document sizes or feature counts, then dot product might not be the best option since it will capture things that are not meant to be weighted. So there's no universal choice. It all depends on your data and what you define by similar. If you're not really sure which one to use, why don't you test with a small sample? Store all your data in different collections and quadrants. In each collection, choose a different distance metric and compare the results and see which one comes closer to what you're looking for. We're going to see different distance metrics being used along in the course, but this table carries the overall information of what we just said and as a rule of thumb, cosine similarity is a good choice if you're working with most uh, text embeddings and especially if you're looking for semantic similarity.